GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. Okay, uh, so, <sighs> Fat Man. Sleazy. We've got somebody on location that's playing Death Race 2000. We've got a Canadian that's barely here, but he turned on his camera just long enough to show us that he's happy to see us. I always happy to see it's, it's Ryan 2.0, man. It's just like Ryan 2.0. So getting, you're happy to see us and you're Ryan 2.0. Are we talking about centimeters or inches? Oh, oh inches. Ooh. Let's talk about that and uh, how we get extreme on the wrestling show. Welcome, everyone, to another wonderful episode. Today, on location uh, from the, the mean streets of uh, Harrisburg? Where, where's the actual restaurant? Gettysburg. Is it Gettysburg? I don't It's Gettysburg. a burg. It's a burg of some sort. Chip Willett is kind of with us here, but he's on location, so he'll be in and out. Yeah, well, hopefully in more than out. That didn't sound right, but whatever. Hey, we're going extreme here, OnlyFans, son. And yeah, speaking of OnlyFans, only speaking of OnlyFans, our favorite uh, uh, content it? creator of OnlyFans for the wrestling show, Ryan Williams, is here with us today. Hi, yo. Uh, today- also, you missed an opportunity to call him fat ball Johnny Laurinaitis when he talks like this every podcast. Yeah. I, I mean, you enough, sounded like Austin there, not John Laurinaitis. Jared, John Laurinaitis. John, John Laryngitis? Laryngitis. Damn it. One. What? 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 <laughs> had one smoke. <laughs> God damn. Uh, so today we're going to talk about extreme rules and and Nothing that happened at the end of Extreme Rules, of course, right? Um, the best meme I saw was Triple H is taking everything from NXT, even the lower graphic. <laughs> He's just grabbing everything. Screw them all, right? This is NXT. Three. This was NXT. This is what NXT should have been had Vince lived at the fuck alone. Right? Um, anyone watch the pre-show? Yeah. There was a pre-show? I accidentally watched the pre-show. Actually, how the fuck you accidentally watched the pre-show? Because he I, thinks it started at seven. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what we did. What uh, me and people I watched it was we thought it was seven. We're like, oh shit, we got an hour. Even right. though if you watch the product, it's at eight o'clock. Oh, the get promotion. the fuck off your high so, horse! So. No, you sit, you stay on that high horse because you know that valiant fucking watch the product shit. I don't have to watch the product. I just read his fucking recaps that you can find on the wrestling show dot com. Actually, that's terrible to base your fucking opinion on just his recaps, right? Because they're not really re- <laughs> they're they're my opinion. They're, they're your- not really recaps. Of what yes, happened. but. I know exactly what what happened on the show that was important enough for him to talk about it. Wow, fair. He might why be wrong I, on, his, then, on his. Then why am I even doing the the dynamite one then? If if I'm doing stuff that's important. Wow, There's nothing important ever happens on that show. Wow. Anyway, I mean, start, I mean, when are you going to start doing Impact? Uh, <laughs> when are you going to start doing Impact? Wow. Just I got, I got, stuff. I got three shows I'm doing, son. That's I'm doing anyway. zero, but you'll be able to find Fat Man's content and maybe Chips and Ryan's content, and and maybe even I'll do a fucking article. Once I, I figure out, once I figure out the website, sure. Yeah, one we'll plus think. one is eleven. So let's talk about what, I'm, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna write up my review and send it to Sleazy via email, and then he can post it. I don't know how to do that shit. <laughs> 
God. Wow. So we're going to the whole about point that. of us doing a tutorial with you guys was that it's <laughs> not that hard. Wow. Pulling back the curtain here a little bit. Oh my God. Who put all these dicks on the screen? Uh, what? I mean, Washington. Get- technically, I started the room, so it was me. Okay, let's talk about extreme <laughs> rules. It happened I'm October say, get 8th. Off the grinder, Ryan. In Philadelphia, a show we were supposed to go to, but then I got a little sick. down there and I just so laryngitis, get it right. I don't have laryngitis, so fuck off. He he took one too many tombstones. I did. Took one too many dicks. Which one legitimately what? he took one accidentally by himself. Yeah. So and that Hold was what, ten years Hold ago? Mm-hmm. Still causing you issues. Uh it was eleven years ago. Anyway. Extreme it was rules eleven opened. years ago. I'm sorry. talking rules. about a pay-per-view, aren't we? Yeah, Fuck. open with a good old fashioned Donnie Brook between the bar- brawling brutes and Imperium. It we're was, now internally the brawling brutes are internally faces on the SmackDown roster now. Who cares? The match was seventeen. The Fuck. Yep. The match was seventeen minutes and fifty seconds. Can't give us four and a quarter. I give it four. Ryan. I heard you like trios matches. Oh fuck him! More than sleazy. <laughs> no, fuck you. <laughs> fuck Ow. all of you. What a hard hitting, great fucking opener. And I look at Sheamus now, like I did with Kofi in the New Day. This is going to revitalize Sheamus. I believe even he says it himself. Yeah, yeah. When he when he come out and said it, it was like. Oh, that make and then I just started doing the comparison. Like it's a whole new world for him that way. Absolutely. Um, I gave this four stars myself. It was fucking phenomenal. Oh, that's it. That's it. I mean, what is there to say about the match? I mean, it was hard hitting. It was fucking nasty. I loved how it was goddamn brutal. They did. They did one of my favorite things about when they do like these tornado style tag matches. Where trio. it well, in this case, it's a trails match, but any type of tornado style match like this, where one guy will take all three of them, you know, and and it looks like it's it's smart working of you know, take one guy down, beat them all down, blah, blah, blah. okay, now go to the next one. Blah, blah, blah. It's it's great work in terms of um, uh, pacing the actual match, it's, it was really well done, and the the comeback spots were great. Um, the only thing that I probably would not, I mean, we kind of knew the, what it, the finish was going to be there was there, but I think it mattered enough to, to do it that way. So it doesn't really take away too much from the match, but yeah, it was great. Loved it. 10 stairs. <laughs> I, I go, uh, I want to give it four and a half, but I'm going to, I'm going to reserve it for later on, but four and a quarter. Uh, because it, it didn't was, happen on New Japan Strong, isn't it? Right? It, 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 <laughs> it, 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 I was at home. I had exactly, <laughs> I was watching Tom Muller beat the shit out of somebody. It was great. But Tom, Tom Muller times six. Um, it, it was great. I mean, you, you didn't have much storytelling, but you're not going to get it in that style match. But you got some hard-ass fucking hitting and and I just got goosebumps every time I heard that, that smack on that chest. Mm. Great. Um, well, what'd you hate about it? A lot. Match of the <laughs> night, in my opinion. Yeah. Four stars. This was great, as expected. I mean, I don't think we expected anything less from these six. Um, right kids died. Um. Yeah, so what Sleazy pretty much said, it was chaotic. It was great. It was fun. Just that's it. Cool. We go from the best match of the night to without question the worst match. Extreme Rules match for the SmackDown Women's Championship. The Morgan defense against Ronda Rousey. 12 minutes and 5 seconds. Can't give us 3 and a quarter. 
Sleazy, you're the woman's wrestling enthusiast. Star and a half. Um, let's start there. Um, this needed to be Liv's breaking out moment. No, it, it didn't. Anything but. Well, if you're going to make her a future, you know, like legit contender down the line, you needed to give her a clean win over Ronda. He's going to be busy the next couple of months. Yeah, okay, whatever. Um, I have a problem with the fact that if you're going to completely change your character at this point, which, to be fair, what's the difference between her and uh, Carmella? Carmella's hotter. Dude, obviously, was- yeah. I was watching the baseball game. I was just going to say that. You said it. <laughs> Hotter with bigger tits and a fatter ass. Like, I don't know what you want me to. Better. I meant in terms of gimmick, but yeah, sure. Um, Hotter with bigger tits and a better ass. That's the gimmick, too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it was a terrible. It was a terrible way to finish her reign off like that. Um, I just. Hello, Nikki Cross a year ago on Money in the Bank. Yeah, it, it kind of brings those same vibes. Um, I don't know. I I hated it, but I was going to bounce out real quick. I'll be back in about five minutes. Let me know what I miss. Like enjoy back. your Chinese food. Oh no, I'm just giving it to my wife. I'm eating mine after the show. Oh well, in that case, fuck yeah. Well, quickly about the Smetcha Women's Title Match. Uh, one and a quarter. If I have to give it a rating. Okay. <laughs> All right. It was universally panned online too. Like everybody hated it. I, well, I think part of the reason why they hated it was because of how it was presented with the finish. I think that my personal opinion is that this should have been Liv's big moment, and it wasn't. And I think they did some irreparable part or harm to her current gimmick, her current. Cur- career trajectory now if they're planning on doing something completely different with her after this so so be it then it doesn't really matter but i'm looking at it from what i see right now and what i see right now is they they completely nerfed her entire title run with uh i don't see that um i've been reading in my articles pretty much saying that the only reason that they are they did the whole lives going extreme was for ronda to beat the shit out of her and that's exactly what happened. Um, I also gave it one and a half. Uh, this thing was a mess. And I think it was, Brian said, panned because it was just a mess. It was a sloppy match. Uh, Rhonda did not want to cooperate with Liv on pretty much any spot, especially with that chair spot where the chair fell. Shit happens. But Liv is trying to do something, and Ron is just like, nope, 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 nope. As they outright stop for a good 10 seconds in the match, like, oh shit, what do we do? And, and that was Rhonda. Yeah, that was Rhonda stopping. Yeah. And then with the end, she pretty much no sold the t- the sun sent down through the table. Mm-hmm. And then when she was trying to put in the 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 finish, like it was all sloppy and stuff. And then yes, Liv didn't live. Didn't tap out. She passed out. So I guess she's stone cold Steve Austin anyway, but just, I just think this <laughs> match was a mess and it's 100% on Rhonda. And she, and I keep saying this, she has gotten so bad in the ring from the time. Who is that? Is that? Oh my goodness. Oh Holy my God! Shit. Ladies and gentlemen, Brandon Dietz is in the house with us, uh, and more importantly, we're shitting on the Extreme Rules uh, match between Ronda Rousey and Liv Morgan. And go and go, <laughs> dude. We, we are gathered here today <laughs> <laughs> to talk about a match. That was obviously the worst on the card. <laughs> this, which you cannot see, yes, now you can, is a bottle of ketchup, which has more personality than Ronda Rousey. I thought you were going to say Wheeler Yuta then, but right, wrong fed. 
<laughs> Would have also taken that as well. <laughs> Kids got more. No, never mind. I, I'm, I'm not going to go there. Ah, uh, he shrunk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Rebecca, we're back. We're gone. We're back. We're back. That's what happens when I, uh, I I literally just jumped in just because I was just like, hey, I'm home early. I okay, know they're so- talking wrestling. I watch wrestling. The okay, flip so- side, the flip side about all of this is so many people have gone in and gotta have good matches with Rhonda. I don't blame Rhonda. We know what Rhonda is. That's Liv's fault. I will hundred percent disagree. I also will disagree with that, sir. Uh, no, because everybody knows that they got to carry Rhonda. You got to carry her to a certain point, especially where she's coming from. And like everybody else she's putting her with, they're having really good matches because they're putting the people that know the psychology better and stuff. But like compared to all the rest of them, Liv, tinier, like doesn't fit the mold of who Rhonda should be fucking murdering. Ryan, I love you, but ever since she came back in January, she's been nothing but garbage. Who, Rhonda? She's had, yeah. She's had one good match, and that was with Charlotte. The rest, every TV match she's had and every other match she's had has been trash. She she even had a match with Natalia, which should have been passable, but it's not. I remember it's just terrible. Which it's like she never she never walked into a ring again after she left. And then her first match back was the first time she ever been in a ring again. It was like when me and Sleazy are in high school wrestling around on the wrestling mats. Yeah. Just after West Lube. Well, of course, because yeah. Sleazy likes it raw. But I'm talking about like you're in high school, you just fuck around doing WWE moves on the wrestling mats at your practice, and they were god awful. Yeah. Uh, yours were god awful. That's what that's what it was. Ryan, you're fucking retired. Shut up. All right. Listen, um, no, no, no. So I, t- he's got a point, though. So Liv just can't just walk away from this. But what what I really didn't like about that entire thing, the ending was fucking dumb. She passes out. So first things first, it's a modified triangle, totally done as wrong. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it just looks bad, and then she comes off with this stupid ridiculous smirk on her face like mm, I enjoy this I like passing I, I, I'm dead and still smiling I it's just, the uh, one. holy fuck like no it just mm, fuck that match <laughs> glad I joined um, right when this happened quickly your thoughts on the opening match this, the trios the Donnie, Donnie book the it was fucking amazing. Great opener. Great opener. Needs to happen more often. So you basically got rid of all of us. <laughs> yeah. And what, Ryan, did you guys not like it? No, no, no you agreed with all of us. Okay, okay, okay. I was about to say that was really good for a trios match. It was my match of the night. Like it really it, it, it just shows you how awesome Seamus is getting. And just sharing the ring with all the Gunther, Walter, whatever the fuck you want to call him now. Awesome. Amazing Aust- Austrian who just kills everyone. Gunther. Uh, well, I have a joke, but I'm not going to say it. But it, it, that, it, I need m- just more of that. I just need somebody else to come up to the level of that now. Well, there are plenty of them in Japan right now. You fucking fuck mark. Um, what the fuck? Ryan, did you talk about the women's? Uh, SmackDown women's title match. Trying to put in my two cents in between here and there talking about it, but it's the same thing. Like, I really think like some of this blame got to be put on Liv as well, not just Ronda. But Ronda is Ronda, she's not there or anything else to be a good wrestler. Like, Liv is supposed to be the one that Liv's going to be there for a while. Ronda is just an attraction. So, Liv needs to get her fucking shit together, especially if she's going to be put in the main event spot. Nikki Cross, same thing last year. She was given her chance and it fucking failed. Nikki, and I would stupid gimmick or not, you can get a stupid gimmick over if you're good enough. Okay. Now, the gimmick over that they've been talking about for four years now. Let's see if that's possible. Strat match. Drew McIntyre versus uh, Karrion Cross. Uh, it went 10 minutes and 20 seconds, but they fucked around for a few minutes before the bell rang. 
uh, Ken gave us two and three quarters. Right, kid, Dodd. I was actually going to say, Ryan, <laughs> you like to get beat with straps. Oh, wow. Don't fucking tell me what I'm into. <laughs> don't make me bleed my own blood. No, don't you go on our OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> or TikTok. Hey, I love my TikTok. First off, second off, legit though. Karen Cross, that's a huge win for him, and that did not hurt Drew whatsoever. Exactly oh. because the mace at the end. No. Anybody else think it was a little short? Um, yeah. It, I, like I, I, I was no. expecting. I, no. I was expecting like maybe 15, 18, 20. Not That's because you're so used to AEW overproducing gimmick matches. <laughs> Probably. You, you, you're, you're right about that, but... And to be fair, I, I, to be fair though, there's like five minutes beforehand of just bullshit, too. So. Of Tom Fuckery. Yeah. yeah. So, so if you count the Tom Fuckery, it's... Uh... Yeah. No, I think it went fine. It was an okay match for a house show. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> I just... I don't know. I was expecting probably more. There will and, be more. That's my. That's the way I'm looking at it. Um, the pepper spray kind of came out of nowhere. I just want to know where the fuck she got that from. Because that's really that, 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 <laughs> that 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 suit she was wearing. Well, buddy. Good lord! It, it just goes to show you, women have more hiding places than men. Yeah, you know, we both got prison pockets, but they got a prison wallet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. Anyway, but it just it came oh, out of it, missed this. <laughs> it came out of nowhere, and I just didn't think it fit with the story. But the right kid did die. Like he needed cross well, needed I, to win that match. No, but it kind of does fit the story, though. Like, I, yes, Doombringer of all ages, but also it makes Scarlet known and made her essentially something to fear which I appreciated because she's a female She, you normally you don't get a female in a something to do something like that yeah normally you're throwing something to the, to, the, to the male no she stood her ground said fuck you mace dead I, I appreciate that I actually 100% agree with Dietz here it makes her look like a fucking beast that is just as dangerous as Cross is. So and hopefully she can fit that to the women's division. I, she doesn't need to be in the women's division. Though. She doesn't, yeah, she doesn't need to. The, she, the, the, the couple. The thing she adds to managing somebody, right? Yes. That's She's a blonde, good looking manager. She's not just a blonde, good looking no. manager. No. That's the thing. It's a callback to a former host of the show. Who- oh, yeah. She, she can't possibly be a heel, right? Hmm. Well done. I I completely missed the callback. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, she absolutely wonderful. Um, she plays her role right to a T. She's been doing it long enough that she knows exactly where she needs to be when she needs to be there. You don't see her figuring out where she's supposed to be in the spot, which is great. Um, I as for the match itself. I think the biggest problem with it is that you started this match off or this, this feud off from a gimmick match. So where do you go from here? I mean, are you just going to have another gimmick match? Obviously. Right. You can't have a regular match after this. Can you? No. Scarlet on a pole. Scarlet Scarlet on a pole. pole. Charlotte on a pole, which won't mean anything to anybody, but you can gladly have another match just straight up wrestling. Yeah, but it's kind and of a, and it makes sense. Like you beat me because I I legally sprayed pepper spray in your eyes. Now let's see if you can beat me in a normal match. You beat me because of the outside interference. You would say, "Oh, this is you can't beat me on your own. You can only beat me with your busty little." Oh snack. my god, is this a stupid shark cage thing? No, I was gonna go. This must be. Yes, I want her in a cage. I was just going to say this, this reeks of greatest wrestling match in the ever. We all see. No, 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 no. I will punch you in the fucking ovary. You you start (laughs) with 
a last man standing match, Edge versus Orton, and then you have a regular wrestling match. The greatest wrestling match. The great, no, because it isn't the greatest wrestling match, because that would be WLC, right? Letter match for the Raw Women's Championship. Bianca Belair defends against Bailey. 16 minutes or 40 seconds. Can't give this three and a half. So these are the other women's wrestling answers. I like this, but it had some significant problems. There was an Asian in it. What's your problem? Right? That, and yeah, that tells only, you everything only, you like, know. only like two minutes, though. Okay. So the matter. All he needs is 25 seconds. So he came like 15 times. Right. So here, here's, well, the joke of it was why wasn't EO and Dakota down there? That was the entire point of the match or the entire point of the angle of killing off Alexa and Asuka. So why didn't they just all come down and, and just three on one or until Bailey won? My kayfabe reason of this was that EO and Dakota were sitting in catering and heard he Bailey's music go off and go, oh shit, weren't we supposed to go out there? Yeah, fuck it. She'll be fine. And then she wasn't fine. So they finally made their asses out there. So that's, that's one piece. Number two is that there were the the finish with her doing the KOD on top of the ladder piece? Oh my god, that was oof. it was nasty, but it doesn't make sense. Because I thought you, the same. yeah, you, you have to have Bailey basically or basically hold the ladder the entire time. Why is she holding it? And I was trying to figure out if that was the original plan or if she was just going to take the KOD on the open ladder. And they they did an audible immediately because you could see Bianca pull, go towards the, the other ladder and then pull back before she actually drops her. So I wonder if that was just a miscommunication or whatever. Um, two, wrong kid died. Um, I really yes. think... I really think um, or excuse me, point three. Um, I really think this was, Bailey should have taken this. Um, it makes a better story to have Bianca like fight against the odds and, and reclaim her, you know, her top of the mountain type thing against a trio that is really doing a lot of, you know, great work here. So that being said, I'd still give it three stars. It's not, it wasn't a bad match. It was, it was good, but it wasn't, like earth shattering considering that this was a historic match first time one-on-one you know women's ladder match you know it yeah so um yeah i definitely there were there was the question of of why i mean i'm just trying to figure out why that bailey went over um i would have thought damage control their idea of for damage control is we control all the belts the whole KOD on the ladder was an awesome idea, but still it didn't it didn't make sense in the match psychology wise. Um I don't know why she would hold on to it. And there were just a couple it seemed like missed spots or it took a lot to build up to a couple of the spots. Um so that's why I'm gonna give it a three. Wrong kid died. Ryan. Wrong kid died. Absolutely. Bailey should have won. Not for them to have all the belts for the damage control controller thing. It was just that would have been fucking perfect for Bailey to win. Fucking other one can win it back. Crown Jewel or whatever the fuck. Give him a big woman's title change moment over her. But Bailey should have won. Maybe that's what they're doing. Uh, Deets. I don't mind that Bianca retained. My question from here is. Where does it lead? Or do we go to Bianca Ronda at Survivor Series? Bianca Ronda. Do we do a uh, a Rhea? But apparently, Beth Phoenix is probably getting involved into this. So apparently, um, isn't Survivor Series not bragging rights anymore? They're not going to do Raw versus SmackDown. No, no, but it's War Games. Yeah, but they're yeah. having two War Games matches. But it's storyline driven. So do war games with Well, it has to be Team judgment that is damage control. No, it has to be intergender war games, judgment day versus edge band yeah. and okay. And the good brothers. 
And then obviously you're doing the whole blood but if they versus do, if you do that versus whoever they put up against them, yeah. Oh, you know what they you're short you're short one then for for judgment day. You can pick up somebody on the way. Well, they, yeah. You know what? what you could do in um Riyadh, and this would be a big deal because obviously it's Riyadh, is do three on three, all the belts. No, all the belts on the line. No, the Boo. tank straps and the, the, the raw championship. <laughs> I mean, they would have done that if Bailey would have won. No, they don't have to because then you can say my title versus your tag titles. See that? And yeah, that like would make that. a big, that would make a big historic match. At Sleepy. Saudi Arabia. What's like that? You can, like you can pick up on the wrestling show, I hope, because the website is fixed. Wonderful merch with sayings like, I hope you step on a fucking Lego. Fair. <sighs> I'm actually wearing my hope you step on a Lego t-shirt. <laughs> so thanks for that. Anyway, well, um, got a shameless plug. I got it. I, oh, I uh, love it. For, for, for the match, three and a half. So I, I enjoyed it. Uh, there were some spots that I didn't really care for. The whole double KOD thing took way too long to set up. That's the only thing I was just like, all right, this is kind of lame. I think uh, if you're going to do a spot like that, you need to really, really get it down. Yeah. Like when when Cena used to do the WFUs and shit like that, he had that down pat. Mm-hmm. Also helps he's built like a brick shit house. True. Well, they're, I, they, they, they book her as an ultimate brick shit house, so... I gave the match three stars. Um, again, good match. Questionable, questionable spots. It just didn't. Everyone said it. My main gripe was they built up weeks of this three on three stuff, and then they take out Oscar and Alexa, and they even say on TV, "This was our plan to take them out." So it's three on one, and they have a one on one better match. I. It just was like. You built it up so well, and then you kind of just sh- didn't execute. Was my problem? Catering, man, catering. Deadly, deadly disease. Just because you spend all your time in catering doesn't mean everyone else spends all their time. Okay, hey, I spend all my time in catering for another reason. <laughs> yeah, you're on the other side, but I would kill to be in WWE catering every week. Well, are you here? The roles are to die for. Yes. They let you take the rolls. All right. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt a cost expense right there. It doesn't hurt food expense. Rolls are easy. There you go. I quit match. Finn Balor versus Edge. 29 minutes and 55 seconds. Ken gave this three and a half. Ryan. Like you said in our chat, that's the classic way for the face to lose an I quit match. And then the woman, but normally the woman doesn't usually get beat after. So, like, that was a nice little touch. <laughs> Thank God the woman got beat at the end. Yes. <laughs> I totally thought this was a fucking dog of a match. I had this at four. Four. I loved it. Might have been Edge's best work since he's been back. So, I thoroughly enjoyed it. What I really, really loved this probably is also Balor's best match in a long time. Um, I appreciated the Yeezy mask because the one thing I really couldn't get, can't stand about Finn, and I love Finn Balor, my biggest thing is his entrance. Oh. And every fucking smile that he always did, didn't matter if he was face, didn't matter if he was heel, always. <laughs> Real ridiculous shit eating grin. Put that fucking mask on and made him look fucking serious. I'm like, okay, I can get behind this. It was, it was uh, music seemed a little different too. I haven't heard that before. Uh, it's the Judgment Days, uh, or um, well, I think it was uh, Ultra Bridge. No, no, this was, it was, this a, was it a, was a, it was a mixture of his old music. Yeah, it was a mixture of the Balor theme, but it wasn't like the big like crescendo of him waving his hands and lights go up. I enjoyed the fuck out of this match. It was great. Four stars. Let's continue. Uh, Took a little bit to get going. Probably could have 
shaved a little bit off of it, but it built to be to tell a wonderful story. And it was more okay. It was more <laughs> of a story than a match. Um, even though there was a match there, but it was more about getting to the story they wanted to tell, and they told it well. So I agree with Canton. I gave it three and a half stars. Mm. Sleazy. Um, you're absolutely right. I think it you could have shaved a good five minutes off this. Um, but the back half of this match was a banger. Um, and it did everything it you it needed to do to encapsulate Edge's trajectory here. And I think they have something really special here. And I want to see what's next. But the match it's I I dare say the best part of the match wasn't in the match. So, you know, you can see what's next if you watch the product. So anyway, uh, oh, suck my, yeah. all right, uh, Chip. Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was definitely four and a quarter. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And like I said, Finn Balor's just been on a different level compared to the way he was when Vince Man was in charge. Uh, he actually looks like a leader of the faction and not – doesn't look like he's just rolling with the punches. It looks like he's literally in control of everything. And, like, his match with Edge was awesome. Uh, the way they brought Beth in and destroyed her was equally as awesome. As bad as that sounds, no open to hate me to say because my wife goes as soon as it happened, she's like, I hate the judgment day. And I'm like, oh, they well, did their job. They did their, 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 their job. They wanted you to hate them, and that's what they're doing. And they did an even better job of it last night on the product. By the way, I was gonna mention that the biggest heel heat from last night was oh, yeah. Dominic Mysterio. And it was fucking glorious. He is starting to slowly come into his own. He had the biggest booze. And he was Eddie to points to where that came across. And it was great. Uh, well, he is Eddie's son. So. Well, Fuck you. I was going to say that, too. I let it go. I was like, they need to just say, he needs to just blurt it out. And the entire internet would just flame on. Just it, go it, crazy. It, I, I I thought it was a really great match, and to me, that was my match of the night. Okay, I, I can't can't fault that. All right, uh, fight pit match: Matt Rober, Seth Rollins with Daniel. Why Cormier. couldn't this be better? And uh, the Astros just walked it off. Did they really? They were Ooh. down seven to three, and they came and they, back. And they came back. They just walked it off. This with playoff walk off Homer. Comebacks. I, I, Alvarez hit a walk off Homer. Walk off three run homer. Yeah, yeah, I'm a Blue Jays fan. So can we go back to talking about wrestling, please? <laughs> On a wrestling podcast, <laughs> how dare we? You're, um, you're welcome. Yeah, you got a bone to pick with that 10 run. Uh, 16 minutes and 35 the, seconds. The, the Red Sox the other night? I did. They won. Uh, 16 minutes and 35 seconds. Uh, Canton gave us three and a half. I'll start first. <sighs> It was a good match? Question mark. I I don't. It was I a steel cage to, match without ropes. I want to. I want to weigh more from this. I want to weigh more from this. I'm not sure if I liked it or not. Like I'm just like, what they did, they executed well, but Cormier really was wasted. And Cormier looks like he's been too spending too much time at the um, catering. With sleazy, and I don't know. It just. Three stars? Question mark. I don't. I don't, I don't know. know. I give it that, and I'm the MMA enthusiast here. Ah, <laughs> uh, my big mm. differ, sir. Uh, I'm gonna chime in on this because I loved it. Uh really dug DC. Uh, I appreciated DC just for the simple fact he stuck his ground, like. I did like that. I did like that. He he kept his ground. He didn't let he he stayed 50-50, but he kept his composure. He didn't swing on anybody. Uh the only part I really didn't enjoy was the actual like when they were messing around with the second tier. Could have done without that, but everything else was just flowing, just super nice. 
easy, easy, easy stuff. Maybe that's my issue. It was easy stuff, and I want it more complicated. Yeah, yeah. There's no reason to complicate it, though. It, it's this is a fight pit. It has a mixed martial arts feeling. The ending came sudden. It was from a triangle. I appreciated that. Uh, as an MMA fan, it felt quasi legit. It was it a wrestling match? Eh, not really. Was it entertaining? To me, yeah. Uh, I just needed to sprinkle more DC. I think DC should have did a little bit more. I mean, he's a big ESPN attraction. Should have used that just a wee bit more. Uh, overall, I agree with the three and a half, but I had no problems with this. Minus the, the up top stuff. I didn't like how it was designed. Well, I, I remember when they brought the original fight pit out in NXT and the top stuff worked out well in NXT. It didn't work out well here, and I wanted it to. Because they were up there. There was nothing Daniel could do. He was on the ground. He wasn't climbing up his cage to get up there with them. Uh, they were just basically had a free-for-all and, and did a lot less than I expected them to do. But no, Daniel Cormier calling it down the middle, warning them both, don't touch me again or it'll be your ass. And that played out very well. I guess I wanted to be a little more complex than it was because I know Riddle's ability and I know Seth's background. And they could both have gone a little more complicated, but I guess for the casual wrestling fan, this probably came over well. Me being more MMA knowledge than I do about wrestling, uh, to me, it, it lacked, but that was only because the simplicity of it, I guess. So I, I, I agree with three and a half. Ryan. I had no issues with the match. Uh, I don't think it should have been the main I get why it was the main because you had to take the ropes off and fucking around, but realistically, anything else like it didn't matter for foreshadowing because of what happened after the main event. It didn't take away from the main event. I have three major problems with the match. Seth freaking Rollins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, number one, um, the entire point was that you had to answer a ten count or submit. And it had to be in the ring, right? Right. And Seth Rollins does a pedigree on that little ledge and he goes, count him. And Daniel Cormier says, he's got to be in the ring. What the fuck is Seth doing? Kick him off the fucking ledge. <laughs> Legitimately. I mean, there's no reason for that. That was an easy fix. Why is he bitching and complaining about how he's not winning the match? Number two, um, I will play devil's advocate. He's a, I can't do it. He's a heel, but he's not. Even if he's a heel, it doesn't matter. He because he's going to bitch and complain about the rules because he's a heel. Yeah, but it takes four seconds to go. Boom. No, it's bullshit. And no fucking way would that have anybody who has two fucking brain cells in their mind that, that, that hers. No, he's got to start counting in the ring. There was much more problems that he could have legitimately complained about, which was the fact that Daniel on both the Kate on two major occasions didn't start counting for like 10 minutes. I hate that. Your job is yeah. to count the 10, not sit there and go, are you okay? Are you okay? You okay? Are you sure you're okay? okay. Bye, 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 bye. To counter you. That's what an MMA referee does. Are you okay? Can you continue? Right. Yeah, but the point is that you still have to answer a 10 count. But it's said by submission, too. So it's he wasn't I, I being submitted. It. He sat there and and Seth's jacking off in the I corner while he's, you know, somebody he's trying to win the match, and the referee is not doing the thing he should be doing to win the match. And to be fair, it that. happened, it happened with Riddle too. So that that's my second big problem. And number three is what both Chip and Dietz had said is that outside of the, the two beginning spots of don't fuck with me, I'm, you know, DC, yo, it could have been any other special guest referee. He literally did the same spots that any other special guest referee would have done. Now, does that mean, do we care about that? I don't know. Um, but 
the match itself left me not wanting another one of these anytime soon. Um, the only good spot that I loved was the, the faint kick off of the, the cage Vegas. Lindo the the, the, the Lindo showtime Lindo. kick. Yes. I can only think of Vega when I see that. So, well, Street it, it, too. no, that is straight up. That actually happened in a real MMA fight. It probably yes, it did. I didn't know. Aldo, right. It was against Aldo. No, 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 no. That was against, uh, uh, no, it was Pettis that kicked him. Oh, again, no, again, Pettis. against Henderson. Okay. Well, it's funny because Corey Graves quoted Benson Henderson in his commentary. And I'm like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but Benson is the one that got his head kicked in by it. Yeah. Cool. Oh yeah, that so, yeah. was cool. What was, yeah. it, was that? Uh, Strike Force. It was in Strike Force. No, WEC. Was it WEC? Yeah, WEC. So, so last WEC event. Matt yeah. Riddle gets a main event win on a pay per view, and it will not be remembered at, at all. all because. Buck Dave Meltzer. <laughs> oh, we're going off the air, folks. Oh yeah. <laughs> Lower thing in the screen. Bring the door, bring the door in place. Got it. Hey, it speak, speak, speaking of thing, did you notice it was a wet mark? Like no. the end of the show, it was like how NXT always ends their show. Wet mark logo. Oh, yeah, I did see that. Oh, I that, did. I, I picked up on that. Uh, somebody pointed it out to me on a forum, and I was just like, oh, shit. Okay. That's cool. But oh. good long was it worth it? All right. I don't have the voice to go through everything, so. Okay, well, I guess that's me then. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> shit, God damn it. Uh, so we get the lights go out, then we start seeing characters uh, from Firefly Fun House in the arena. Um, then we cut to uh, the. Oh, while this is all happening, is uh, Bray's singing? He's got the whole world in his hands. Um. Then you've got a shot of Firefly Funhouse that's been decimated. It's basically, you know, left for dead and whatnot. Cobweb skeletons, great. Dead things everywhere. And then you see a door. Door opens. You see nothing. And then all of a sudden you see a lantern. Then you see this weird dude with a brand new mask that you've never seen before. Takes it off. Holy shit, it's Bray Wyatt. I'm, I'm here. here. Pop off. Fade to black. What do we think about that? Couldn't, so, couldn't have done it better. I'll, I'll chime in on this. So I really dig the fact that every single character in the Firefly Funhouse is a representation of Bray's WWE career. Absolutely love that. So you got Huskis, who's Husky Harris. You've got what is the buzzer? What's what's the buzzer's name? Mercy, Mercy, Mercy the, yeah, Mercy the buzzer, who just and he wore the Hawaiian shirt. So, which is funny because did you recognize who who was who? Grayson Waller. Yeah, you could totally tell that was Grayson Waller, and you could tell that Huskis was Joey Gacy. And then what I really dug was when it went to the sister Abigail. Did you notice the mask? No, I didn't. Not right away, but after when it was pointed out. It's the Bludgeon Brother mask of Brody. Oh, oh is it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I did not know that. But I like how everything became was all about the characters. And then the Fiend himself was a character now. So it just shows you the evolution of what they are trying to do with him. To me, it was literally just the South Park meme of Stan. Uh, Stan's dad just chilling out with a boatload of jizz everywhere. That's basically every. That's that's how it was for me. I'm just like, yes, thank you, thank the Lord. My daughter was not up watching this because she would just shat herself and she would never fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought it was. Pr- I, I I didn't know what to expect, and then and it's funny because a few weeks ago, I saw the rumor they were going to make a faction with people based on the Firefly Funhouse. And I put it in the chat, and I was like, man, this has got to be some cock-ass bullshit. And then it came to fruition, a little, little more week by week. And the way it was executed was fucking perfect. I couldn't 
couldn't ask for a different. I mean, it, it's like I was talking to Kim about it. I was just like, it is like they kept everything so hush hush and planned everything out perfectly to a T to make that probably one of the best returns in wrestling history. Hmm. From the theatrical standpoint and from a storyline standpoint, that's what I get out of that. Ryan. Uh, welcome back. Another person who feels like, and I've said it a bunch of times so far this year, like with Cody and stuff. That's another person that was welcome home, buddy. You're like, you're, you're home now. Go have your fun. And everybody bitched about Vince and this and that. Well, Vince ain't there in the world. Triple H is there. And the influence is clearly seen right away. Oh, big time. Oh, and did anyone catch where SmackDown is next week? Not on Friday. It's Nolans, isn't it? Nola. I don't yep. want I don't want PTSD, so I'm not gonna <laughs> fucking say it. Uh, it's still going on. It's cool. That's not the PTSD. Just a whole trip. <laughs> oh. He's just pissed about the wings. I didn't even have the wings. Right? So like wasn't Someone, the best show was, of the weekend, but it was a pretty good wrestling show. Very good wrestling show. I still have not watched Bomb for Glory yet. Oh, Impact. Impact had another wicked fucking Impact show. So Impact had one of their shows from 2022. Cool. Yeah. Um, my take on why it was, and I said it in the chat, I was like, so he's a hacker now, and Sleazy immediately got pissed. <laughs> right um, now, <laughs> he's twitching. <laughs> he's twitching on Twitch. No, but at, at, so what I really liked about that, especially in like if, just the whole buildup of everything, they did the due diligence of actually putting other random shit in completely random ass areas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they kept the bro- the broadcast going when they would show that little goddamn white bunny digging to hell and then having hell come up, and it was and they kept the, everything going like the people no, that I'm I'm going like three weeks ago, putting shit in source codes of a freaking uh of a TikTok, and you actually calling a number and it's actually a voice recording saying who killed the world you did, and then it was in like four different languages. Like, they had a QR code on Triple H's mic on SmackDown. And- yeah, it's just all that other. That is the shit that is right on the fucking money for me. Give me more of that stupid shit. Okay, I want I want to say this because I think it's completely unrelated and yet very related. Are you guys familiar with the Try Guys? Yes. Okay, so at least one of you. No. So there's been a big scandal recently. With the Try Guys, where one of the members of the Try Guys got caught cheating on his wife. And the worst part is about that thing was that he was his character, his entire motif on the show was how much he loved his wife. And he got caught cheating on his wife. So it basically destroyed his career. He's gone from the Try Guys. But the point, the reason why I bring that up is the reason why all of it came to light was a bunch of. Redditors got in and literally dig through all sorts of different things and realized that, oh shit, he's being edited out of videos. He, did you see this picture of him and this producer, which ended up being the one he was cheating on with? And what's this and what's that? And blah, 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 blah. And they managed to figure it out so much that they got a hold of Ned's wife and the uh, fiance of the the girl he was cheating on with and managed to bring it to light that they were having a relationship all while this was going on. And just the amount of sleuthing and internet detective work that happens on that kind of stuff is amazing. And if WWE continues to harness that type of power to do this kind of shit, you're going to have a lot of cool shit coming out over the next couple of years because you could tell right from the get go with this that anybody who looked at it for more than five minutes didn't really know where to go with it. But the people who really dug into it knew it was why right from the beginning. And that's really awesome. And I th- absolutely hope they do more of this in the future. Okay. Overall thoughts on the show. It started amazing and went down into a pit and it finished with one of the greatest returns ever. Ryan. Uh, I'll second what Sleazy's dead. 
But I thought overall, the, yeah, there was a little bit of a dip, but on my instead of overall, it was really good. Deets. Great show. Fun show. Ron and Liv need to separate, never ever work together again. Well, we don't have to worry about that anymore, I don't think. Well, I think Liv's going to go do some stupid dark character, maybe even part of being the whole Bray Wyatt thing, whatever. I don't care. Uh, but it just... Anybody else think her reign as champion was actually felt legit? No. Yeah, because to me, it was just... War shit. Yeah. Dump fire. Some of that. All right, Chip, what's your thoughts on the show? I was glad to see an Extreme Rules show that was extreme. Um, started out white, white hot. The crowd was fucking on fire. Uh, and then they followed one of the best night matches of the night with one of the worst, well, the worst match of the night. It To me, it's like the women didn't, they weren't up to par with the guys in this show. And this is a perfect showcase, especially with gimmick matches, especially with this being the first ever women's ladder match. I expected a lot more from that. Um, I didn't know what to expect from Liv and Ronda because I already checked out of that rivalry. So, but I, it was, it was, it was the better, one of the better true moves I've seen in a long time. I'll go with that. And it was, it was a real good show for, for a premium live event. Good show. That's going to be remembered for Rise return and nothing else really. Batman. I got a question for you. Uh, We're going to go to this show. Knowing exactly what happened now, 2020 vision, looking back, would you have gone to this show? Yes. I would say no. Why? I think a lot. the live experience would have been markedly worse. No. The why, you would have remembered the why thing more than anything, and that would have been yeah. the best. You, you would absolutely remember it, but... Even live accounts of the show um, made it seem that it was too, um, you couldn't catch everything that was happening at the time. So I don't, I don't think it, it would have made my experience personally any better than seeing it on, on TV, honestly. I got goosebumps when I saw it on TV. I'm not so sure if I would have live. Okay. Well, break time. Oh, yeah. Well, fuck. We need to go to break. Uh, do we have anything that we can tease on the other side? Yeah, sure. Is it your dick? I was like, are we cock teasing? Yeah, sure. Does it, Fat Man, what, what's our big news? Big? Why do you have your nipple out? He just enjoys it. Only his. fans, only fans, only fans. Um, I, are we back I have here? more stupid ass news about the fight for AEW, which spoiler sleazy's kind of spot on oh boy let's find out after this and we're back folks uh so fat man has given us a little taste so let's get right into news and rumors okay so wait 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 because i haven't done this in a long time uh there was two scorecards weekend. Oh, both won fuck by the you. same person. Denver Peters, uh, friend, colleague. Uh, he won both. He won the Impact one, which we'll talk about the Impact one, and he won Extreme Rules this weekend. So fuck him. Now you can go on your news and rumors. Okay. All right, unless Cleasy has something to add. Fuck him. <laughs> he he won the Impact one by like two points. Yeah. And I was I, second. I, I beat Ryan in impact. I wasn't even in the top five. Ooh, I said a bad word and Sleedy didn't notice. <laughs> oh, I, did. I may have totally forgot. Thanks <laughs> <laughs> um, for taking the heat off me, Deets. <laughs> so we all know about the stupid fight that happened all out. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. We know, really? about the, we know about the investigation. <laughs> what fight? What fight? Uh, Sleazy mentioned last week that he thinks CM Punk's being a dick and holding up the legal process. According to oh, Dave, Meltzer. Dave Meltzer, one person has threatened legal action and is being uncooperative as regards to the investigation. 
Uh, Kenny Omega. <laughs> no, I was thinking Nick I Jackson know. was fucking like, I'm out of here if this fucking keeps totally going. That is steel, I tell you. <laughs> totally the dog. Philip Brooks. Yeah, Ooh. shocker. I'll try and be shocked by any of that. And normally I, I, I don't give Meltzer any credit, but anybody who has any thought about that knew that was coming. So, um, Biff Busick. Back to WWE soon. Yeah. Yeah, that ain't happening. Biff Busick is now a full time coach at the Perm Center. Great. Great hire. Absolutely wonderful dude. I couldn't speak more highly of him. Um, I've taken at least one seminar with him. Um, really, really down to earth, dude. I had to take a Max Money 101. Right? Um, See, the nice part about seminars, and I'm going to say this like on the down low, if you're not a worker, like just you're there, but you're not there, if you know what I mean. Yeah. You don't pay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck seminars, but that's me. <laughs> that was me. Um, John Moxley signed a five-year contract extension with AEW. Apparently, and then was... immediately loses the GCW title to Nick Cage in Boot Atlantic him. City, no less. Boo him! No, no, no! Well, I think, I think it's great. the wrestling news. They didn't want our reporting news, sir. We it is just abs- <laughs> We don't. We don't say that name on the show. Who Nick, Nick Cage? Cage? Tony Khan Nick- did not want to have any more matches with, with Nick Gage. That's why he gave it up. You mean GCW world champion Nick Gage? You know? <laughs> Multiple time world champion of GCW Nick Gage. Okay, so he- here's the here's the reality of this. If I were the booker of GCW, I'd be super pissed. Lost a big draw. No, 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 no. A day before this big fucking match happens... They announce that he's re-signed and is being more exclusive to AEW. Go fuck yourself. And he just I, had the belt for a year. Right. And it's like, <clears throat> what the fuck? Now you've basically just, you know, pulled down his pants and told them the finish of their main event. You know, fuck you. <laughs> Batman's about to open this book up. He's had his 10 protection. Uh, the other... I, I'll drop this. He probably has it already written down. Uh, Renee Paquette. I didn't debut. mention it because it doesn't matter because Still, she's she's a nice she's, lady. Oh, she's super nice. But she's married to Moxley. I'm surprised this, yep. that didn't come. And I was, yeah, I'm surprised it hasn't happened sooner. But apparently, debut is imminent. Is from what I've been reading. Wait, what? Renee's going to AEW. Renee's going to AEW. Uh. Really? Last I knew, she signed a, a, an exclusive deal with the Bengals. Nope. I never even heard of that. I didn't know. So, there was also an article out the WWE through interest in Renee Paquette, and she was like, nope. I was, I was legitimately, I was under the impression that Renee pa- Paquette had signed okay. some sort of well, you look that TV up. deal. Um. Bandito, in his own words, has said that he has not signed with any company yet. Even though they said he signed with AEW. Even though Meltzer said he signed with AEW. Oh, yeah. So. I hold now for more money. Any more pesos. Um, well, we just, had, we just had one CMLL guy join up in NJPW. So, why not take an ROH guy? Um, so. If you already know WWE, uh, they announced their their um, commentary changes. Raw will be uh, Kevin Patrick, Corey Graves. SmackDown is Michael Cole, Wade Barrett, and NXT is Vic Joseph and Booker T. Nice combos. I liked Patrick last night. I he too. wasn't as bad as I thought he was going to be. I, I really liked Patrick last night. He, Him and good. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Him and Corey seem like they've done this. In the past, they were well, it was very fluid between them two. And there was joking, there was comedy when it was needed. It, it, it didn't get out of hand. There was no stepping on each other's words like you would get when it's two 
rookies or two people going after the first time together. Um, I thought it was, and I watched SmackDown and I didn't think it was as good. I mean, the Michael Cole can work with anybody. I didn't think it was as good as it was with uh, Corey Graves and Kevin Patrick. And I love Wade Barrett. Don't get me wrong. I just, that wasn't feeling the chemistry that I felt with those two last night. The problem I have with the, the Wade Barrett, Michael Cole pairing is that Wade. So you have bad Cole news. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, Barrett tends to be more of a play-by-play guy and that's Cole's gimmick. So you have two play-by-plays there and it kind of. Yeah, maybe that's where, that's where I lost it. I, think. I, I don't know for sure because I didn't see SmackDown. I don't watch the product. Um, but you, <laughs> nice. Well, I am curious to see how Booker T and Vic Joseph do tonight though. Yeah. Um, just a, a quick minor update. Uh, Renee, Renee Paquette said it herself that she's starting a new show for the Bengals. She tweeted about it. So that's coming directly from her. That wasn't some rumor or anything. Okay. But you said exclusive. So I thought it was an, ex- uh, I thought it was an exclusive. It's not exclusive, but it's pr- pretty hard to do something with the Bengals when your boss would also have something with the Jaguars. Well, it's completely people- different things of media though. Yes, it is. Absolutely. It is. And they're two different conferences. Yeah. No, they're not. not like, Are not they? Like, I thought I mean, they were. Two, two different divisions. It's not like it's divisions, but the same AFC. Oh, I didn't. Uh, I thought they were two different. I mean, no, it both, doesn't matter because Tony Khan doesn't own the Jaguars. His dad but, does. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that makes no difference at all. It really doesn't make a difference. No, it doesn't. Not a damn bit of difference. Not a damn thing. No, not a Especially when he's letting his wrestlers work independent shows. So no, how can go, he bitch complain? Going um, back, going back to I just want to mention one other thing. I did find it super enjoyable to only hear two people talking. I agree with that. Yeah. Three man uh, moves always suck. And Byron did a good job backstage. Yeah, I, I I enjoy it. I w- let's see how it continues. So I'll be watching later today. But you don't want four man <laughs> booths like Excalibur, Tony Schiavone, uh, fucking Schiavone. Chris Jericho, and uh, whoever else they got on this week for. My head hurts. <laughs> By the way, Chris crawl Jericho, about Jr. What's that? Chris Jericho is fucking awful at commentary. Oh yeah, absolutely. I don't. Now, I will a thousand percent admit daddy magic on elevation. Pretty interesting because he's fucking amazing. And Canadian. Very 2.0 um, will always have a small spot in my heart for him. Gable Stevenson had a heart surgery. What? From Wolf Parkinson white syndrome. Oh, that's a shit. Dan Hardy had, which is a disorder. Um, to a specific type of problem with the electrical system of the heart. About 6% of mm-hmm. people with electrical problems develop symptoms, which may include an abnormal fast heartbeat, palpitation, shortness of breath, lightheadedness, <laughs> stuff like that. Wow. So, but he is 100% now healthy and training at the performance center. Maybe that's why they cooled him down. Oh, did you see what I did there? Do you yep. like it? I know how to do that. Um, so Tonga Lu, I think I pronounced oh, that right, has yeah, had MCL surgery. Yep. Tonga, what? What? What is the destiny? Oh, Tom and Tonga's brother. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Hikaleu's nephew? Or are they brothers too? I don't know. I think they're, they're nephew. I think it's. It, um, oh, we love nephew. Brian. Did we notice it? Yeah, he yeah. likes to bounce out because he he's a dick. Um, where to go? There it is. I, I want to talk about this here. Uh, no, I already talked about Moxley. I can delete. Don't tell me I deleted the wrong fucking thing. Um, so 2015 tough enough winner, winner Sarah Lee, um, died at the age of 30. Did we find out? Did they say not yet? But when it's that young and they're keeping quiet, it's either suicide or drugs. That was my assume. That's just an assumption. And Bailey wore her her uh, ring attire was dedicated to Sarah Lee. A lot of people had 
done a lot of different uh, tributes. Tribute. Bailey did one on her arm. Um, Kevin put a bunch, bu- bunch of money into the, the GoFundMe. Go mm-hmm. There's somebody else that put a shit ton of money in there, too. I can't remember who it was. It started received over uh, $100,000 of donations. Yeah. It was it, yeah, they, a huge outpouring. Like, there's a good, like, I remember what looking at it, I was saw it, there was like a couple people who put like five thousand dollars in there. Usually, just by I, WWE alone. I, I'm I'm going to say this, and this is this is terrible, but it's also a reality. Usually, when somebody dies of drugs like that, there's not that much of an outpouring like this. Usually, when there's an outpouring like this, it's usually suicide. So, I obviously we don't know. The family obviously doesn't want the public to know. So peace we'll, and peace to the family. Yeah. You know, just let it go in that respect. But yeah, either way, it sucks. And, you know, my thoughts go out to their family. Yeah, it's uh, pretty shitty. Also, Mandy Rose lost her, uh, her uh, brother at the age of 40. Oh, geez. Which yeah, I did see that. Is. So. Um, Thanks for the downer. Yep, let's put it back up because we're talking about an Asian. Ooh. Um, WB is reportedly interested in a few few agents, a few free agents from Impact. One was being mean Yum, but obviously her husband works for AEW. So that may not be viable. Um, he was trying to get everyone back that he had in NXT that got fired when he wasn't in the power, and she would fit in that category. I know WB has interest in Matt Taven and Mike Bennett and Mar- Maria Canales, but according to Fuck Dave. Dave Meltzer. He believes that they'll go to New Japan because they have history there. He doesn't think they'll go to AEW, but there's something going on. But if there's something going on at Ring of Honor, they could go there because they're Ring of Honor people. So I may be reading a little too much into this. Vincent and Bill Carr were both backstage at Raw last night. Dan Barry and Bill Carr? No. Vincent and Dutch, aka Bill Carr. Oh, 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 okay. I was like, wait, what? Tree and Drew Mendes is going? No. Yeah. I did see today that Maria Canellis, and this could be just coincidence, put the words next in uh with a question mark. I mean, I don't know. It was just I I just I, so how it, as I was scrolling through Twitter at work I'm like yeah okay and just scrolled on uh, I know that Jonah's contract is up with NJPW yeah, sorry that I was gonna I I put a note here um, they're interested in bringing back uh, Bronson Reed Jonah yep. he literally I was watching uh, Declaration of Power and during his match with Okada they said that he came over from the WWE in November and I'm like hmm autumn uh is the autumn pay-per-view it's november 5th and there's talk about possibly coming back to wwe usually new japan does their um contracts from russell kingdom russell kingdom but he came in in november and signed in november it doesn't matter they usually what they'll do is they'll sign them for that period and then go one more year afterwards so that they all end on that russell kingdom weekend why you had the big exodus with the original OG AJ yeah. and all them Shinsuke. Um, they could have also mentioned WWE because on Raw last night, Gallows and Anderson redebuted, and as Gallows Anderson and-, and Anderson is the never openly champion. Throw the belt away. It's fucking garbage. <laughs> well, it, it's going to Hikaleo in autumn. At autumn, just. Fucking throw it! They in should the just throw it away. Yeah, they just debuted a new TV title for Which, JP. Fucking yeah. awesome! It and looks it, like a fucking. Oh God. It, it, it looks like a ticket, like what? a ticket stub. I and, saw it. I'm like, it's the ticket title. I haven't. I haven't seen any photos. It's there, terrible. So. The tournament's going to be amazing. It looks me, like a plaque. Let me, let me look it up. It's, it's it's fucking ridiculous. It looks like an old fashioned belt you have seen in WA. Yeah, the IWGP yeah. TV title. Yes. Um, yeah, it's it. Here's my problem with the never open weight title in in general is that Carl, they dumped it to Carl to destroy 
what legacy it had to begin with. It was, it, it turned into nothing when it got to Carl, it should have, I'm going to say this and people are going to be pissed at me and I don't care. They should never gotten rid of the IWGP intercontinental title. Bingo. Uh, they should have absolutely brought it back as soon as. Well, it's kind of funny you mentioned that because Will Ospreay mentioned that on, after his match um, on Monday. And he was talking about how with Naido, he, he was, he, he goes, he goes, there was a belt that no one wanted or everyone wanted and no one could bring pressure prestige to yet. I have a belt that no one wanted and I, and I brought prestige to it or it's like vice versa. It was, you have to watch it, it, I put the, the interview on yeah, in like, the, mm-hmm. and it was well, perfect. He's talking about the U S title there. Yeah. And it, while yes, that's true, it was done almost by default because there is no mid card title now. Is that why they brought the television title in? I think so. Yeah, it should take the place of that tertiary title. I think, honestly, the U.S. title should have been the New Japan Strong title. Mm-hmm. I don't think it should have been in New Japan proper, but it was a way to make sure that you know it's a big enough title that people care about whatever um yeah yeah that title that looks fucking awful right. um wb is it now say wb campus rush recruitment tour so they are in at the university of mississippi tomorrow and then georgia tech clemson boise state arkansas ohio state kansas and penn state is essentially just trying to look for the next WWE superstar in collegiate levels and giving them NIL deals. Cool. Um, So there was another backstage fight at AEW last week where apparently Andrade punched Sammy Guevara in an attempt to get fired. (laughs) What the fuck is going on back there? Well, Um, I, I think we know with Andrade. He just he just wants out of his contract. He wants out, yeah. But there are actually multiple quote sources. Oh God, saying that they they're actually pissed off that Guevara didn't get sent home. Also, because he was also in another backstage incident with Eddie Kingston. Well, Kingston got a two day suspension. Well, Guevara <clears throat> was still on the show. And he was still on last week's Dynamite while Andrade's at home. Yes, Andrade was the aggressor, but that's two backstage instances. And Kingston made light of it, too. He made a, uh, I remember it was on Rampage, he made a little 30 second short that he was like, I should apologize, which I apologize for. Well, here's the thing. Uh, and according to a bunch of backstage, um, you know, and always take these with a fucking grain of salt because a it's a W B God only knows where these actually came from. But a lot of backstage accounts said that Sammy intentionally made sure not to engage with him. And he still got, well, he, he was told not to just him the day. Both before. of them were both of them. were. So it was about Tony Khan, I believe, right? I guess. Yeah. I assume <laughs> there is no other executive vice president there. They all got sent home for fighting. <laughs> uh, speaking of sent home, Nigel McGuinness is no longer with WWE. And neither is Jimmy Smith. Uh, Jimmy Smith was a surprise. Nigel, I love Nigel. Okay. I, I will absolutely say Nigel. If he doesn't immediately find a home in Ring of Honor, I am, will be shocked. I know. What about, has, what about next to Europe? Um, I think. I don't think they're going to bring anybody back for that. I really don't. Um, I think they're just going to start over. And while I love Nigel, like I said, I think he's a decent commentator. He's gotten way better over the years. Um, It's sad to see him go. Um, But I think after this, if he doesn't show up in ring of honor as a commentator, I think he's done with the business period. Excuse me. So what I think was he was probably offered the SmackDown job. I don't think he wants to leave Europe. That that might be possible. Yeah, that that very much much would be possible. 
because last I knew he was still he was still in the UK, right? He's yeah, living so, yeah. So it could be possible. Well, Ring of Honor will be a great place for him. <clears throat> All right, one last bit of news. Um, Page got cleared, cleared by the AW Crackpot Doctor to wrestle. That same one that uh, cleared Tua? <laughs> cleared it actually, uh It actually is. Is it right. legit? I thought that was a bit. No, that's real. No. That's real. No, it's not. That can't be real. That No, it's not. That's I not the same. No, it's not. Guarantee it is. The doctor for the Miami Dolphins is not the doctor for AEW. They will use the Jacksonville doctor, not the Dolphins doctor. Look it up. I really think it is. I, I'm absolutely looking it up. Okay, you're probably faster than what I would. I, I'm looking it up right now. So, I think it is. Because he got fired. Wasn't fired. No, the Miami Dolphins co- team doctor got fired. No, that wasn't the Miami Dolphins. It was an NFLPA. It is the NFLPA. Because it was. it's a third party. That's the whole point of him being there. And he was let go by the Players Association. Oh, okay. But yeah, I'm still trying I, to find the name. It's not him. the same guy. I could have sworn it was, but if I am not, Mm-mm. my apologies to said doctor that I have implied, and also go fuck yourself. The head doctor is for the Dolphins, Dr. John. Uh, uh, but remember, this is, it, it wasn't the head doctor. It was the third party. Oh, the third party. Okay. It's the third party guy. That's what I. That's where I'm getting at. He was the third party guy. I, I believe. I might not be right. But I could have sworn I read that somewhere. His, I'm trying to find his name because I'll, I'll. They mentioned his name in the page article. I didn't write it down. Um. Yeah, I can't. I can't find it immediately. I actually came he's across a neurologist. Mm-hmm. And all concussions are done by independent neurologists, so that no tampering with <clears throat> any teams or anything. Um. I'll continue looking this up, and we'll we'll we'll. The neurologist cons- consults consultants work on each sideline and every episode, so it, it could actually possibly be him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, He's a different neurologist. Yeah, um, I will say this: that I ran across a people people's uh, magazine article about it, and out of nowhere, who do you think pops up in the 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 um, commentary of it? Doctor Christopher Nowinski. Huh? Really. Just out of nowhere, dude. No, he's a big time player in concussions. Like yeah. he, he's dude. got a seminar every single yeah. year with the NFL. Like he's big a big now. fucking deal now. But yeah, it's just it's funny it right how now. that is. But just that's how small the wrestling world is. But yeah, I can't I can't find exactly who it was. Um, but oh, Alan Sills. Yeah, it's not the same guy then. <clears throat> so yeah still good clickbait sign that shit up <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. please sign up i know Maybe there was a there was a meme about it i think i i think i posted it where it was yeah. all like i was oh. like the same doctor i think i said it as a joke the same doctor who cleared to a clear uh page mm-hmm. but I, I bring that up because gates with neck problems i'm going through neck problems now and this doctor for AEW does not have the best track record. Shocker. So I'm kind of worried for her in a sense of I hope that she is 100% healthy and can go in the ring. And not just because she wants to wrestle, they're just going to clear her. She's a fucking mess. There's my answer to that. And <clears throat> she'd rather die in a ring than so be it. And I'll be honest, thousand percent her choice. Yeah. Yep. Like I, I won't judge her against it. I won't judge anything bad about it. In fact, I'll probably even tune in and watch. <laughs> but I just I mean, wish nothing we all unhealthy. did with Flair. Yeah. I didn't. Well, Susie, hey, because we'll that requires him to watch the product, so we know that's not happening. <laughs> I hope it happens on pay per view then. Well, probably will. Full gear. Uh, Deets, put yourself over. At the legendary Deets on Twitter. 
that's really where you can actually find me. I just post up about funny shit about wrestling, about MMA, retweet a lot of Barstool because Barstool is amazing. I have gotten huge into Dave's one bite. I love him. Bro. bro. Yeah. I love that. I found his YouTube channel and mm-hmm. I've been binging. One, it's one bite challenge is amazing. Didn't realize he did it. Now I'm going to a lot of the places that he's he's gone it's to. Of, he's we went to the the one where he was in Cincinnati, where he actually gave his first zero review because they <laughs> kicked him out. The place actually wasn't bad. Was it? No, it wasn't bad at all. And then yeah. we went to another one that he rated. It was like it was a deep dish style pizza that he rated. So he doesn't do deep dish well. He gave it like a five six. Shit was about a bang and ten. Yeah. But I love uh, anything. Uh, literally, when I get off here, they they're doing the dozen tournament challenge, which is trivia. Mm-hmm. Love it. They have everybody from Barstool come in and do this challenge. I can't wait. Wow. I know I'm plugging comp, but whatever. Yeah, fuck him, right? Shit. Brent, <laughs> Brendan Walker ain't watching this shit. Fuck that fucking hillbilly. <laughs> Chip, put yourself over. Well, actually, I got some more in JPW stuff to talk about. Uh, Deets, I actually, though, I had the barbecue place you were talking about recently. Three hogs? Yeah. Well, uh, I went to a friend's house for the, to watch the pay-per-view. He's like, you ever had three hogs? I'm like, no. Heard a lot of great things about it. That shit's good. That shit's really good. <laughs> I, I have mean, th- I had three hogs. It's not as good as what I had in St. Louis, but it's good. Um, it's good for here. Yeah, I, I, I had to dip them in flour to find the white spot, but I have three hogs. So I'm gonna the wet this- spot, not white spot. Jesus Christ! Wow. Jesus, you couldn't only even man, finish the bit. Only I could that bit. I did. Dick. So, uh, I didn't realize. So when I was flipping through in JPW World, uh, they still don't have Royal Quest Two on. I'm that's got to be on very soon because I can't wait to fucking see that. Uh, but. I, I'm going to butcher the fuck out of their name. Los Ingobernales, Japan? <laughs> Los Ingobernales del Japón. I, well, I can never pronounce it. Uh, but anyway. L-I-J. Yeah, L-I-J. America. L-I-J. Well, uh, they now have their first ever Mexican that joined with them. Teton came and debuted uh, in the six-man tag with the United Empire. Uh, it was United Empire versus Lij, and uh, they ended up pinning uh, uh, shit Francisco. Um, so that's going to definitely push that on to go on. But uh, also, Kevin Kelly announced that today, as of today in Japan, all restrictions have been lifted. So now people can travel over to Japan just in time for Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, and on top of that, uh, the, the audience is now more interactive than it they're was. They're allowed to cheer now. They're allowed to cheer. And you can tell uh, when they had um, Declaration of Power on there, they, they were stomping, they were cheering, they were hooping, they were hollering. Mm-hmm. And so funny. Um, when I, spoiler, I, I bought tickets to the, the New York show and it's funny because you go through their list on New Japan. It says there's asterisks on each show that says this is a cheering event or this is a non-cheering event for that reason. Yeah, because uh, in J- J- Japan was very harsh on that. Speaking of the New York shows, Rumble on 44th and the pre-Halloween show that no one knows the card. They're going to hit the music and that person's going to in the ring and no one knows. But of course, the writers uh, that is bundled package on fight TV for twenty nine ninety nine. That's I think we'll on that. Yeah. Um, I will be going to the Friday show um, because, because we didn't do extreme roles. I needed a show. I needed my fix. So I ended up doing new Japan, especially because they're bringing stardom stars over. So obviously Asian fucking Mark, of course, um, for a lot of protection, sir. Oh, you can, um, yeah, I'm going to need it. You can find me and Fat Man on the Best Darn Sports Show, period two. We are going to be uh, going live Thursday this week. Uh, Heavy G had something come up on Wednesday. So we're back to, for one night only, 
we're going to be back on Thursday, which actually works for me because I have to do two dinners tomorrow, so I wouldn't have been able to be on tomorrow's show anyways. <laughs> also, you can find me on Twitter at the Sports Guru 728 and I have been posting a shit ton of NJPW stuff. So if you like NJPW, uh, look for my review of Declaration of Power to come up, and then um, also follow me on Twitter. Cool. Hockey's I'm- back. Okay. <laughs> I am at TWS Sleazy. TWS Fat Man. And the show is at Sleazy Fat Man on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can find our show every Saturday morning at 8 a.m., wherever you can get your wonderful podcast fix. Uh, You can find our show, if you're listening to us on that Saturday morning, you can actually come to to us live on twitch.tv slash Sleazy and the Fat Man. Um, And watch our live show. We'll also be doing some random things here and there too. Um, you can check out fat man's wonderful, uh, articles on the wrestling show.com as well as other things that we'll be posting there, including news rumors, immediate stuff. Um, we broke the news of Antonio Noki passing away. Oh, uh, by the way, the tribute was amazing. Uh, if you can find it, look up for the Antonio Noki tribute from, um, Declaration of Power. They did it right. The show and not Dave Meltzer's 43-page eulogy where he brings up unrelated weddings. I don't remember there being a wedding talked about. No, Meltzer's. Meltzer's. No, if you get a chance, I'll give you my uh, in New Japan World uh, password, and it's like the first 45 minutes. No, no. it's So Dave Meltzer did this 45-page dissertation on Inoki's career and includes all sorts of weird shit that almost certainly did not need to be in there. Anyhow. Wow. Um, and it was all one sentence. It was all, it was literally all one sentence and like 50 million. It, it had more ums in it than our show. <laughs> um, um, uh, uh, <laughs> that's pretty much it for the show. So with all due respect to Ryan, go fuck yourself. Go fuck uh, the wrestling show subreddit at the rest r slash the wrestling show. Uh, great thanks for Deets for coming on the show. Great thanks to Chip coming on the show. And as always, for Sleazy. For the fat man. This is the wrestling show. Thank you guys so much for listening. Peace. Fuck what, Dave what? Fuck you. Fuck Dave Meltzer. Fuck Kenny Omega. Fuck Tony Khan. A hot dog is a sandwich. Hot dog is not a sandwich. A sub is not a sandwich. Hot dog is not a sandwich. A sub is not a sandwich. A sub is not a sandwich. A sub is not a sandwich. A dog is a sandwich. For people, hot dog is a sandwich. Dude, I'm trying to do something like serious here. Oh, God. For people who are suffering, if Sarah Lee did commit suicide, people are suffering from mental health. You're not alone. Um, there is someone you could talk to and who loves you. So let's, uh, yeah, let's just. Leave it at that. Wow, you went down to the dark depths of hell. Sure did. Hot dog sandwich. It's not a fucking... The preceding presentation has been brought to you by the Gear Network.